him, other places that people read about in books. And also, we also talked about the gift of what this is, because it's not normal. No, this is not the average experience. It's great to have the resources and the possibility and really the privilege to travel around this country and to go to other countries. One of the one of the highlights for me was as a child, I always wanted to travel the world and going to Australia was on my bucket list. I got to be paid to go to Australia, bring my husband, bring my son. We got to go to the Taj Mahal. I got to do that by leaning into my introversion and stepping into that vision that God gave me of who I was. So doing all of this, it's beautiful when all of this comes together. It's yeah, it's breathtaking. And I, I, I do not lose sight of the fact of the magnitude of joy and privilege that I have. So I need to be a good steward. You are a good steward. And I learned something. So I asked you a question. And this is sort of my go to question. You know, I get one good question. And I ask a person, how do you make dreams come true? And what did you tell me? I told you that dreams are, are something that can go away. A vision is what you need. A vision will stick with you. It will activate you. A, a dream will inspire you. But how many dreams do you have you did nothing about? But if you have a vision for something, you're willing to put in the work toward it. You're willing to go through um, whatever it takes to get to it, however long it takes. And for me, my life started with that vision. Like I knew I was going to be on stages speaking in front of thousands of people. I knew I would be a best-selling author. I knew I would be traveling the world. I don't know how I'm going to do. Nobody travels in my family. How am I going to do that? Like I you just said, know it. I just I knew it. Like I know the sky exists. Like there's grass. Like it's just okay. Well, if this is true, then what do I need to do to be that person? Well, I guess I need to be on stages. <laughs> I guess I need to let people see my writing. I guess I need to say yes to these things I would normally say no to. So when when you started saying yes to those things. What was the first big moment that all of a sudden you realized, wow, this thing is kind of big? That was when, that was like the, the pivotal moment. I was recruited to go to a different high school. I was recruited by this one lady, this little Southern white belt, who would see me at every debate competition and would harass me to come to her school because she saw that I could do great. And what school was that? This was Adamson. This was in Dallas, Texas. That's my hometown. And I believe her enough to say, okay, let's see. Let me see if I can convince my parents to sign the paperwork. That was my first big decision to latch onto her faith in me. I knew no one. Like I'm there was nothing there to bring me except for this idea that this woman who saw me like maybe once or twice a month had this much faith in what she saw as potential. So when I had that opportunity and I went to the school, it was a blank slate. That's when I decided, what if I was just this person? Like if I was just, I have this complete blank check to do whatever. Okay, what if I, if I'm supposed to be in front of stages, I'm gonna do things. Let me audition to be the lead for the school play. I've never been in a school play. I'm, not, I'm an introvert. I wanna be in the back. I'm not doing. I said yes. I didn't get the lead, but I was one of the main characters that was there. That opened up the door for me to do other auditions for me to do speaking competitions. Like part of my college was paid through speaking competitions. Had I not accepted her invitation and latched onto her faith and what she saw in me, I wouldn't have even said yes to that. Yeah, I want to echo something you said earlier too, because you said you you lean into that. You, you have that vision and you lean into it. And I think that that was the fearlessness that you decided to have. You just, you made an active decision to start a process of living out that vision when the opportunity presented to you. So you took a, a, a fearless approach toward that, regardless of what you introverted, extroverted, you saw that vision and then pushed into it, like you said earlier. That's great. And the Absolutely. name of your program is Jerry? Oh, Intrepid Impact Leadership. And that, that's why he was, you know, <laughs> that's the yeah. Richmond Radio. And that was an Intrepid Impact. Monday morning. Okay, so exactly. <laughs> let's talk about the program that you have for women. Let's, let's yes. dive into that and, and explain that to our listeners. Yes, when Jordan was